Hello and welcome to the Daily Millwall for Boxing Day 2023. In today's Millwall news, it was a match day today. Of course, being Boxing Day, we're at home to QPR. It was a must-win game to avoid relegation, and it had. We did. We won the game. Uh, first home win for three months. Can you believe that? Um, now six points away from the relegation zone. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah. Millwall secure Boxing Day win over Q QPR. This is from uh, millwallfc.co.uk. It's a match report from the official website. Uh, Millwall defeated the Queen's Park Rangers 2-0 at the den on Boxing Day in the Sky Bet Championship. Tom Bradshaw and Murray Wallace scored in stoppage time of both halves to secure three much-needed points in SC16 for the Lions. Joe Edwards made four changes to his starting 11 for the visit of the R's as Joe Bryan, Duncan Watmore, Idomi Umaku, and Bradshaw came into the lineup at the expense of Murray Wallace, Kevin Nisbet, Billy Mitchell, and Zion Fleming, who all dropped to the bench. The Lions had their opponents pinned in their own half for the majority of the opening 10 minutes, but were unable to make Asmir Begovic work, despite a corner kick and Idomi Umaku's ball across the face of goal. George Honeyman, on his 50th appearance, curled a free kick over as Mill continued to search for openings with a long throw from Ryan Leonard, then calls him momentary uh, mayhem inside the penalty area. George Savile unable to convert from close range. QPR's first foray into the Mill box, meanwhile, came with 28 minutes on the clock, only for Savile to race back and snuff out Paul Smith's cross. Brian then saw a free kick blocked by the wall uh, as the halftime break uh, approached. Before a Lions trio were a, a, unable to muster a shot on target with a minute to play until the whistle. Three minutes into the four of stoppage time, however, the Lions had the lead. Following a driving run through the middle from Watmore, his pass found Savile on the edge of the area. The Northern Irishman's cross looked uh, to be heading wide, but Bradshaw was able to sneak in at the back post to slide in and net the opening goal. And that is it there. That picture is it there. Five minutes into the second half, Maku dispossessed the R's and charged towards goal. Bradshaw and Watmore were waiting in the box, but the Irishman instead opted to shoot, drawing a save from Begovic. Both sides jostled for position following that, but an opportunity was presented to the visitors with 62 minutes played as Ilias Chair was put through on goal following a cheap concession of possession. Fortunately for the Lions, Matija Sarkic was able to claim his low attempts. Millwall were becoming uh, flustered and unable to hold onto the ball. More losses of possession allowed QPR uh, to mount an attack minutes later, but bodies on the line meant the sheet stayed clean. Wallace and Fleming were brought into the game for Brian and Bradshaw with 20 minutes to go, but the next chance went the way of the visitors on 78 minutes, and it was a big one as Chair's cross was sent wide at the back post. Fleming flashed a superb effort from outside the area, inches past the post at the other end. Meanwhile, uh, before Chair shot wide as the chances started to mount up. However, with the Den somewhat surprised by the fourth official holding up 10 minutes, 10 minutes... Of time allowed at the end of the second half, Millwall were able to seal the game as a corner made its way to the back post, with Wallace notching his second goal of the campaign. Um, it could have been three moments later, but substitute Nisbet fired into the side netting, whilst Fleming's volley was deflected wide, but they did not matter as the Lions picked up three points at the den. And there you go, there's Murray Wallace immediately after scoring. Uh, being... Uh, um, Celebrating with Kevin Nisbet there, fellow Scots, uh, Scottish man. So the team was Sarkic, Leonard, Cooper, Harding, Norton, Cuffey, who uh, came off injured. Um, so given it's a short turnaround, three days, uh, I don't think you'll be playing in the next game. Uh, Imaku, Savile, Brian, Honeyman, Bradshaw and Watmore. The subs were all five. Five were used. McNamara on 88 for Norton Cuffey. Nisbet on 83 for Imaku. Uh, Wallace on for Brian on the 71st minute. Fleming on for Bradshaw on the 71st minute. And SA, remember him? On for Watmore on the 83rd minute. And the unused subs would be Akovsky, Hutchinson, Mitchell and Longman. So there you go. Um, yeah. That was very much needed. Um, like I said, first home win in three months. Um, you could see that. Look, 
this what what he's doing now is he's rotating he's rotating the squad because we've got a game every three days. But we look so much better if Fleming isn't isn't playing. We we look so much better, especially with Watmore, especially with Maku. You got pace. You can run it. What more can run on the ball? Imaku can run off the ball. Um, that's what you need. You need pace, and and um, that was very much uh, appreciated today. To have that ability to break quickly. Um, it's it's what we need. Um, like I said Norton Cuffy, he, he got a knock on the head. He had to come off, so I don't think he's going to be playing the next game. So there will be changes, but I just get the feeling that he's he's going to start Fleming in the next game and it's just going to go back to how it was and seems weird to say but last season Fleming was one of the first names on the team sheet they actually the formation that they kind of um after the uh what was it the Rotherham debacle no not Rotherham Blackburn debacle um then they changed the formation for the, uh, Gary Rout changed the formation for the Rotherham game and basically built the team around uh, Zion Fleming and, and that worked wonders but uh this season, like he needs to be Fleming needs to be dropped, and you can see when he his drops, we play so much better. Um, but it, look, this was a must-win game. We needed players to step up, and a lot of them did. Uh, a lot of them did. They just, like Leonard, um, Leonard Savile, Ryan Honeyman. Um, they 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 stepped up, and that, that they knew what they needed to do, and they got it done. So fair play, everyone. Um, but again, that was against QPR, who were a bit, a bit dog dab. They're in, they're in the relegation zone, aren't they, for a reason? But you know, if we can beat the teams at the bottom, uh, which we haven't done recently against Stoke and Huddersfield, but if we can, if we can start beating these teams and picking up points elsewhere, then uh, yeah, we 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 don't have anything to worry about, which is good because uh, it was starting to get a bit. It was starting to get a bit worrying, wasn't it? Seven games without a win. Um, but yeah, let, let let's hope. Let's hope that this is the turnaround. Uh, this is the start of uh, a progression where we we're going to get better. We're going to move forward, and we're going to do what we need to do um, to do well in this league, and then. If we can make it to the summer without getting relegated, then let's see what um, uh, Joe Edwards can do, if he's still around then. Now, not only have we got uh, Millwall back in terms of on the pitch, but off the pitch as well, we've got our Millwall back. What do I mean by that? Well, did, did you see when the linesman uh, uh, went on the pitch and rubbing his head? Well, he got hit by something, apparently. Uh, so, obviously, we've got the Daily Mirror, the shit rag, stirring it up, of course. Um, they put this out, um, highlighted this. Of course they do, um, because they need the clicks and they they want to shitster uh, against me. War. I don't know who Hector Nuns is, but he sounds like a sounds like a fake name, doesn't it? Like carry on name H Hector Nuns, like a Randy Randy Bishop. He he, he Hector's the Nuns. Um, yeah, Samuel so face FA Pro. Well, you. Only in the in the event that there, it will be in the referee's report. Uh, after assistant referee, uh, linesman, you mean, struck by object during a win over QPR. So, yeah, apparently uh, it was a starburst. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's Opal Fruits. Remember them? They used to be called Opal Fruits. Um, so what are they going to make the club do? They, they're gonna, they can only have Haribo. They can only have gummy worms and, and shit like that. Like... Uh, um, but yeah, we've got our mule back on and off the pitch. Um, so there you go. Uh, but the boost of three points was marred by an incident in the 57th minute with allegations also that mule keeper Medija Saki was a target. But away supporters after giving an offside decision, uh, full stop, after giving an offside decision against Millwall, Wilkes, uh, that's the linesman, was soon visibly holding his head. Yeah, well, don't, maybe don't do that then. Maybe uh, get get do your job properly. You won't have anything to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking to referee Thomas Brammel and then receiving a medical check before security staff, staff were deployed. And it took some of the gloss off a hugely important win for the home side. Uh, taking advantage of a dreadful performance from QPR who remained in the bottom three. Mill boss Joe Edwards said, uh, I was well aware of there was an incident. Um, 
I haven't seen anything back, but I don't know the details, so I can't comment too much. But if an official has been struck by something from the crowd, that's something behaviour we absolutely do not condone. I don't want to see that. Yes, well, turn the other way. You won't see it. I know there was maybe an incident with Matty Sarkic in the game as well, having stuff thrown at him. So there are issues the club is going to have to look into today. Um, so there you go. We are back, baby, on and off the pitch. Now, uh, moving on to this, obviously post-match comments uh, from the subnews.co.uk. We have put this fantastic snowflake overlay on their website. Very nice, very nice, very Christmassy, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, that was about our spirit today. Joe Edwards reviews Mill's much-needed win over QPR. The Lions boss praised his players for their application in a 2-0 victory. Um. What's with the coat? What's with his coat? Is he, uh, I guess he's is he's not contractually contractually obliged to wear any of the club stuff. But um, is he does he does he reckon himself to be a be a bit of a fashion icon? Is that is that anyone who knows fashion is that like an expensive coat, uh, like a a name or something, Canada Goose or something? I don't know. Uh, Joe Edwards said he felt relieved after Mill grabbed a 2 0 win over Queen's Park Rangers. Goals from Tom Bradshaw and Murray Wallace at the end of either half saw the Lions win for the first time since Edwards' first game in charge in early November against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, that is Joe Edwards' first home win. So there you go. First home win. Uh, that was also their first victory at the Den since September the 20th. <sighs> Oosh. Record season ticket sales, by the way. And lifts them six points clear of QPR who occupy the last relegation place. Yes. Edwards believe it was Mill's spirit that got the job done as he praised Adomi and Mako the defence and cast his eye over other aspects of the game, including allegations of one match official and Matib Jasaki being hit by objects during the game. Uh, the Lions boss said, oh, definite relief. Uh, relief at the end of the win this run. Uh, relief at the end when you see that much added time at the end. Particularly after the way the last home game went. As, as I've said, I've got a lot of belief in this team. But when you're in a difficult run, you do just have to really dig in. And I thought that uh, that's what that performance showed today. Uh, these games, uh, when they're London derbies and you've got two teams in a very difficult position, both teams reminded of how important the game is and how important the points would be. It creates a bit of tension around the game. Uh, you're not always going to get free-flowing attractive games. But I thought we showed enough quality in spells to see signs about where we want to head. But ultimately, it was about our spirit today. We were really difficult to play against. Uh, QPR played some nice football without ever really hurting us, I think. I, I don't think Matty, Matty Sarkic had a made to say, had a, um, made a save, really. Yeah, you know why? Because they did. that's possession football. Passing it, passing it, passing it. You've got to get it forward. Either long way, either... Long balls or just uh, running forward. You've got to get it forward. No point passing it sideways. That doesn't do nothing. Uh, so those basics that we want to be about in terms of the fundamentals before we talk about playing any football, they need to be there. Uh, they were there today. Gets us a clean sheet. Two consecutive clean sheets mean four points and we have to keep building on it. Uh, yeah, Sarkic, again, a bit wobbly when he came back in, but that was the rust. Same thing with Biakovsky when he came back in. He was a bit rusty, and it takes time to, to get into the. To get that match sharpness back in it. And that's how it happened to Sarkic as well. Um, so that seems to be paying dividends. On his side's defending, Edward said, Oh, I like us defensively all across the pitch. Uh, what Mill would have been renowned, renowned for in the past is uh, with the players we've had Ryan Leonard, Jake Cooper, Murray Wallace, and Sean Hutchinson. There's some strong and experienced players renowned for defending the box well and being a strong set-piece team. But today you had a team like QPR who wanted to build up from the back in every opportunity and we really went after them. When you have players like Duncan Watmore and George Honeyman jumping out to go and press, it really puts a stress on the back line as well. And you saw players like Wes Harding and Ryan Lender jumping into the QPR after follow players. And that's a big physical demand. It's a, a bit of bravery, but I think... If you want to put in performances like this at the Den, uh, there you get some energy from the crowd and you're on the front foot. Uh, the team has to do it collectively. We want more quality in the performance. We want more football. Uh, but before we can worry about that, we need to make sure, especially with the run we've been on, that's the foundation we want to build on. Imaku 
making just his fourth Millwall start, was rewarded uh, the in-house Man of Match award over the Tannoy system. Uh, on the 20-year-old Irishman, Edward said, oh, I thought he did really well today as a young player, and I've said this in recent weeks about Adomu and Romain, but when you're in a team desperate for points in a difficult run, I think you have to choose wisely and carefully where you drop the young lads in. Uh, I've seen bits in games recently where we've been lacking that spark and pace at the top end of the pitch. I've seen bits of Adomu in training. He played in the under-21 game uh, 10 days ago and scored a hat-trick, which was something for me to see. Uh, I wanted to give him his opportunity, and he obviously took it today. It was a real threat. Alan Campbell was left out of the squad for the second match running following Saturday's 0-0 draw uh, at Stoke City. Well, he's got to be going back then, hasn't he? He's got to be going back. Unless, if he's not injured, he's got to be going back. On the Luton Town loanee, Edward said... Oh, I've got one injured pl- uh, player in the squad, which is Casper Denor, which is quite unusual in a busy period like this, having more players in the fitness squad. So I've had to make selection decisions, and Alan's been the unfortunate one. Uh, he's a great pro, trains well every day, literally just for the teams. I've been picking and options I want on the bench to change. It's just a decision I've made for these two games. Uh, one of the linesmen and one of the linesmen and Mill keeper Sarkic were both allegedly hit with objects thrown from the crowd in separate incidents. Edward said of the uh, linesman, uh, because it was down my, on my side, I was well aware of the incident. I hadn't seen anything back, but uh, not been given any details. I can't comment too much. But obviously, if an official has been struck by something from the crowd, that's something we absolutely don't condone, and we don't want to see that. Of course we don't. Uh, there was maybe an incident with Matty as well, where Matty has something thrown at him in the game as well. So there are issues that the club will have to look into without me seeing it or knowing of facts. I'm not going to comment too much, but those are things that can't happen. And we don't condone them. Indeed, indeed. It's very unfortunate, is it? But um, apparently it was a starburst. So there you go. I don't know if you ever had a starburst. And look, if they, if they pinged at him, it might hurt. If they just lobbed at him, it's not going to hurt, is it? And it it, like, it could, could get you in the eye. It could could get your eye out. Stop throwing things, you'll get your brother's eye out. But, um, yeah, I mean, come on. Um, it's it's a lot better than a hand grenade. That's all I'm saying. Uh, now, uh, we've got this. I think we this might be a repeat. This is from londonnewsonline.co.uk, so they might have already said what was mentioned uh, in the piece that we just read. Uh, do, 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 do. No, here we go. I oh, know we have read that, yeah. Oh, no, no. Uh, definite relief, said Edward as he reflected on the game. Relief at the end of the run. Relief when you see there's going to be that much added time 10 minutes after the way the last home game went against Huddersfield. I've got a lot of belief in this team, but when you're in a difficult run, you just got to dig in and keep going. I thought that was an absolute performance show today. Um, these London derbies, you've got two teams that are in a difficult position to both know how big the game is and how big the points would be. It creates a bit of tension around the game, so you're not always going to get free-flowing, attractive games. But we showed enough quality in spells to show signs of where we want to head, but ultimately that was about our spirit today. We were really difficult to play against, and QPR played some nice football without ever really hurting us too much. Uh, Those basics are what we want to be about before we talk about playing any football. They need to be there. Uh, Mill have now kept back-to-back clean sheets following a 0-0 draw at Stoke in the previous out, and the only goal they've conceded in the last three games was an injury-time penalty. From Huddersfield's Delano Bergzog in their previous home outing. Yeah. Edwards has previously been keen to show, uh, to see his side improve in possession, was delighted with his team's defensive display against QPR. Um, and then we got the quote where he's, he's mentioned, he's mentioned the players by name. So you see him, I think he knows what he's doing here in the media. Like, the second game out where he's digging the players out already, not by name, but just in general. Um, then he's mentioning and then he's obviously dropped the kids he's dropped the, the talent the young talent and he's he's wary of uh, playing them but then he plays them now um, and now we're here he's like literally singling out the players by name I think this is him trying to get some confidence in the players by picking out the ones that played well and saying he played well he played well he played well which is, look, if that's how he's going to do it, then fair play. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever seen an NFL game, and uh, sometimes they film in a dressing room after the game, and they got they have like well, they, that's the Americans, you know how they are. They all they like all give speeches and shit like that. Uh, they give the match ball to one of the players. The the, the coach does. He goes, oh, for he's outstanding. This this uh, forty four yards or whatever match ball, and then they're like, wait, wait, wait. and then they're all cheer. You know they they love cheering Americans, don't they? You know what I mean. Uh, you can't shut him up at times. Um, but yeah, so it seems that's what he's doing here. He's literally like hyping up the players. But fair enough. If, that, if that's what he needs to do, if that gets confidence going, absolutely brilliant. If that's the strategy he's come up with, and yes, please, like it's clear that he's he's figured out that uh, even though my job title says head coach, I need to be a manager. I need to big up the players. I need to pump them up. Well, someone does. If he just wants to be a coach, then either bring someone in to do that or get one of the ones there to do it uh, for you, like Barrett or, or Myers or whoever it is. Get them to be the, the hype men and, and big up the players and get that, get everyone chatting and, and talking and, and going. But you can see here, so he's, he's naming the players individually who've done well. and it's I like it. I like it. Um, hopefully this is the turnaround. Hopefully we can uh, move forward and uh, start um, just getting results and playing well. And yeah, that's it. Doubled up on the quotes. Um, and now we got this. I think this is fresh. This is from London News Online. Cut UK talking about why is he starting a Macu? I think it's about. A, the pace. Oh, we may have already heard this from from the uh, Southern News piece. Um, yeah, yeah. He's talking about pace up up at the front. Yeah, he's talking about the under twenty one game with the hat trick, and he's talking about Alan Campbell not being there. Yeah, I think Alan Campbell's gone in, and he they must have told it. You know, they must have told him already. It's like, what is it? It's four days away. I oh, wouldn't be surprised if on literally the New Year's Day. They announce that he's back to Luton. Um, obviously, if if you know you're going to send the player back, you don't want to be a prick and like have him hanging around for the Christmas games. Let him go. Let him go and be with his family if he's got one. I don't know if he's got kids, but let let him go and but let him go and do that. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, we have silly season is coming upon us. We don't have a we haven't got two farthings to rub together, but I'm sure there will be story after story after story about we've been linked with this player and that player and this player and that player. Maybe even some departures. Uh, you never know. But, um, yeah, it's just good to win. It's good to be six points away from the relegation zone. And hopefully this is the, this is the turning point. Hopefully. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.